Hey, buddy, watch this. Hey folks, Regis here, and I've got a very special video today. We're going to be taking a look at a new game that's still a little bit top secret, currently using the code name Battle, but I'll be able to tell you the full name soon if you stay tuned to this channel. But essentially, it's a new card game, kind of the ultimate card game, because it's a real-time game. There are no turns, as you might be familiar with, from past games you've played. Everything happens in real time. Attacks resolve in real time, which means it can get pretty kinetic and pretty crazy and pretty awesome looking a little something like this. That probably didn't mean a lot to you. There's probably a lot going on there. You're like, whoa, Regis, what the heck? I don't know what's happening. And that's why you're going to watch this video. I'm going to walk you through what a game looks like in battle, basically showcasing all of the different elements of the game screen so you can understand what's happening. That way, when you finally get your chance to play, then you're going to be well equipped to jump right in, understand everything, and just get moving and start, hopefully, dominating some opponents. So that said, let's go ahead and move over to the game screen and I'll break down all of these different components right now. Whoa, I moved. Well, I needed to get out of the way of some certain elements on screen here, but this is the battlefield for Project Battle. And I'm not gonna show you any actual gameplay right now. I'm just gonna walk you through all the different UI elements on screen so that you know exactly what to look for once we get into an actual game. So uh, first and foremost, there are heroes on the left and right side of the screen. You're on the left here. We are Dante from the Devil May Cry franchise. We're gonna play against Ryu, you might recognize from Street Fighter. You'll note here as I click around and you'll see my clicks here, we have 30 health as does our opponent. We have 25 cards indicated here in our deck and zero units in our graveyard. Uh, opponent has the same because we have five cards in our hand. You'll see the hand right here and uh, these each have an associated mp cost and you'll note the mp bar down here is at four currently so we have four mp available and that bar will fill up in real time moving up to 10 that amount is variable depending on how you build your deck or certain other gameplay elements but for this deck it's going to be 10 so you'll see we're at four so we cannot yet play these six cost cards although we can play one or three cost cards uh, the spaces here are the primary way in which you'll be interacting in the game. You'll see three hexagonal spaces on each side. What will happen is you'll place a unit in those spaces. They will have an attack gauge that fills up over time and moves towards the opposing hexagon. When that attack gauge reaches the hexagon, it will then process the attack and either deal damage to the unit placed there, or if there's no unit placed there, it'll do damage or directly to the enemy hero reducing their health from 30 to zero, which is how you win the game. Now, of course, there are some far more complex interactions than that, but units primarily will be attacking directly across from them and trying to deal damage to other units, taking favorable trades, or perhaps just overwhelming your opponent and killing them. Now, the game has a lot of keywords, a lot of complexity, and a lot of depth that manipulates how fast things attack, where they go, what they do, uh, how they take damage, how they avoid damage, whether they're uh, standard or flying units. There are all kinds of complications we're not going to get into in this video. I just want to make sure you understand the various user interface elements and that's an important one you'll have to pay more attention to in the future. But moving on, a couple other things I want to note. There is an X pocket field down here right behind my head. Uh, these are essentially extra spaces for your hand where some things in the game will put cards there or draw things to your X pocket. There are different interactions, but uh, basically just a special little extra place for cards to live in case you need them. Also, there's this AP counter over here, currently at 0 out of 19. Uh, what this does is every time you play a card, if you play a 6 MP card, it will increase your AP counter by 6 to correspond to that. And eventually it will fill up to 19, at which time a new icon will pop up over here, which is your hero art. It's basically a hero's special ability. Each hero has three options you can choose when assembling a deck. And that hero art will have a very influential impact on the game, and it'll be free to play once you've gotten it to that point. So it can be a really swingy style effect. It can help build your deck, some kind of combo enabler. There are all kinds of different options for it, but it's a 
uh, resource you want to be building to by playing cards that you can have these really powerful swings you can also hear my opponent has one that only costs 12 AP so they do vary in cost depending on their power level and their hero etc so keep that in mind and then finally I guess the last component is the timer up here we have this five minute timer every game has a five minute timer which I love because it means games can't go on longer than five minutes, uh, which is fantastic because sometimes, you know, you get trapped in a game and it might take 30 or 40 minutes or something, which is crazy. And you're just on the train, you're in the bathroom at work. You don't have time for that. So knowing that you're only going to be committing around five minutes to get into a game. And it's usually, by the way, much faster than that. Games typically end in just a few minutes. That's a really fantastic component to this game uh, that makes it so much better to play in my mind than a lot of alternatives. So I think those are all the basic user interface elements. I think now that you understand what everything is doing and tallying and where it lives and what it does, I think we can just see some gameplay and still talk through some things in a little bit of depth. You're not going to know everything after watching this gameplay, but you're going to have a good feel for what this game looks like and kind of how it plays. So let's jump into that. Okay, so I'm going to be playing a big style deck here where my goal is to really summon big units that I'm cheating out at mana cost, essentially. We're going to be playing against, against just an AI component. Uh, opponent here but that still is sometimes very powerful don't let that fool you the ai can be particularly good especially as i'm still learning the game so you'll see here i'm playing a card this is going to summon a minion um, from my deck that costs four mp or less and i'm running a lot of big minions with negative downsides so i can cheat out extra stats and uh, i triggered an active response phase you saw some stuff popping up on screen there what that means is anytime you play an action card which is a non-unit card this is a unit card but anything without stats is going to be an action card you go into this uh, stack phase where you're, you and your opponent are both alternating actions. You play something and then your opponent plays something and then you play something as long as they have the MP or the cards to do so or choose to do that. Uh, so you resolve a stack in descending order. So you'll see uh, he played an action card there, but I did not play an action card. So only his resolved. I know that we're not going through every card right here because it's happening pretty fast, but I just want you to get a feel for what these sorts of things look like. I'm gonna play an action card. We'll go into the action phase. The active response starts. Does my opponent have an action? No. They just decide, oh, they do. Destructive instinct. So he destroys an enemy unit. That's his action, so he's gonna destroy this. After that happens, my action will resolve. So I'll summon another new unit. We're just going back and forth, resolving in reverse order on these stacked cards. Now this is one of my, unit, my opponent's special abilities. He is going to use his AP up here in order to play his hero art. Uh, in this case, uh, it added a unit with revenge to the X-Pocket. Revenge is a keyword that happens when things die, essentially. So he got a big, scary dude there, uh, basically for free, after he'd spent that AP, which is pretty crazy. So I am still just going to be summoning more guys. I used another action card here to summon another big minion from my deck. Uh, unfortunately, it's only a 4-8, so it doesn't even trade particularly well into my opponents. I'm going to go ahead and cycle this card, which adds a big a big unit to my graveyard, at which point I'll be able to use my hero art when we get up to 22. You can see we're currently at 18. We'll use my hero art. We'll summon a big unit from my graveyard as well. We're going to trade here. You'll note that my gauge hit his. We took a counterattack trade once my gauge resolved. Then you also take counters once the enemy unit's gauge resolves as well. So attack battles between units happen really, really fast in this game. There's not a lot of downtime and there's not a lot of waiting, which is pretty fun. So stuff's moving and, and going and always uh, action. And I know it, it can look intimidating in some ways because there's just a lot happening, but once you get a feel for what's going on, um, it plays really, really smoothly. As you can see, I'm not I'm having no trouble here talking through it and just playing it out, despite still being very new at the game myself. i um, learning what my cards do still, but uh, have a comfortable way. And we've, we've pushed our opponent down to 12 health. We're still at 14, but I have two really big units on the field right now. This one's just going to die to the trade, but this 4-4 is still going to attack. And this card in particular is pretty cool. It's going to add some units to all of my board slots. So I'm going to wait here until my MP fills up and make some decisions based on what my opponent does. If he kills this unit, I'll have the ability to play more stuff, but I can also just destroy this unit right here. This is a five mana action card. It destroys an enemy unit and I take damage based on their attack. So I'm only going to take three damage to um, to kill this. My opponent played a counter action card to destroy it first and then restore some health. It was going to die anyway, so they're like, hey, I'll just sacrifice it, gain some health so I'm not losing so hard. And again, this is an AI opponent, but still pretty skilled one. Uh, here we're both just chilling. Not anything much going on here. Uh, my opponent uses their hero art again. It's a very affordable one, so you can tell they're using it more often than I am. We're going to go ahead and destroy this minion again, hoping that this attack will resolve. You can see my gauge was almost full. 
So we're gonna resolve that. Uh, he's gonna do it again where he destroys the minion first and then heals for seven. So every time I destroy something, he's kind of just uh, interrupting my destruction, destroying it himself to gain some sort of side benefit. And he played a, a unit at the very last minute there, um, taking advantage of my attack gauge being full, playing a really small unit to take a favorable trade. That's a pretty smart play. Uh, now my opponent is adding a revenge card to their X pocket, which of course we talked about previously. So they're gonna have an extra card drawn and they're gonna be able to play that soon. I'm gonna play this, which is gonna fill up my entire board with little dudes, but that's okay, because they're still gonna block this big guy. Because of course, if there's a unit in the way, the attack will go through the unit, as it will hit the unit and block, as opposed to going through to my face. So playing little sacrificial units here is no problem at all. I'm gonna start an active response phase here, just to see what happens, see if he wants to commit to anything right now. I wanted to play that card anyway, so it was easy for me. I will be playing this three mana action card to summon a big dude in the slot here very shortly. Do do do. We're gonna play it before. Oh, oh, or or my opponent's hero war goes off. This game is taking longer, by the way, than most. We've had a uh, a nice little uh, back and forth here, which I like a lot. Um, we get bonus MP by the way during an active response phase. So that's something to keep in mind. You see the blue MP filling up there. Uh, that's a neat little bonus not everybody knows about right away, but it means essentially that if you start this active response phase or your opponent does, you can kind of cheat stuff out that otherwise might not be possible. So my opponent's not going to play an active response card here. We destroyed a minion. I could use my hero art right now, but all my board spaces are full, so I don't have any way to summon anything, but he kills that unit, so then I summon a big thing right here. It's going to come into the field right before his attack gauge resolves. As you'll see, that red bar was right there. And this gets to attack immediately back because it has a rush, which is the thing that makes it attack faster upon being played. And it looks like my opponent may not have any counters. Oh, no, no. He plays a giant dude right at the end. Oh, no. Um, we're still hitting him really hard, though. I'm going to go ahead and destroy this unit uh, just in case this attack can get through. We only need the zombie to attack, right? This infected down here is enough. Oh, but he's going to destroy it. No. But we can destroy his unit too. So currently this 4-1 is still poised to attack because we're destroying the two units, the blocker included. I'm down to six health though myself. Three health actually after that resolved. Does he have an answer? Can he put anything in in time? Oh my gosh, this game is really close. I think we're gonna get there. I think he's out of MP. Oh no, no. I have to block here or I'm gonna lose. Does this, this sacrifice is three health and played so I can't actually play that without dying. Um, uh-oh. 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 I'm gonna die, guys. I am dead, guys. Unless my opponent gives me MP. I think I'm dead anyway, maybe here. Yeah, I'm, I don't have time. I can't block. <gasps> oh! Oh, I got my blocker off just in time! Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, that was close. Wow. <laughs> it was so cheap because it was a cheap revenge mission, but still large. So we actually have a chance to come back here. Okay, so these are going to attack, resolve even. This is going to be favorable for me. Um, if this goes through, it's GG. <laughs> that was a crazy close game. Okay, crazy close game. Now, I will say, I know that that was probably still um, a little bit overwhelming. I get it. Um, we're going to play this more, so I'll be able to walk you through in more detail exactly what's going on. And I'll tell you too, it'll just feel better when you get a chance to play it yourself. You'll start to understand how these things are interacting and why I'm doing certain things when I'm doing them. And we'll talk more about in-depth strategy too, about when to play things, waiting till the last seconds your opponent has less time to respond. Because being a real-time game, uh, you know, manipulating their ability to do things quickly or not quickly enough is a really important strategic element. So playing a unit at the very last second before they have time to like remove it with a spell, for instance. Those sorts of things matter a lot. So a different style than you might be used to, uh, truly earning the moniker ultimate card game, like it's doing things so much more skill intensively than some card games uh, that may not be for everybody, but for people who want to shine and showcase their skill level, a game like this goes a really, really long way towards that. So uh, that said, I hope you enjoyed this video, but please feel free to ask any questions you have. I've been playing this a lot. I've been playing it with a lot of other Hearthstone streamers. People like Dane and Slissa are also playing this game right now. And uh, I think Dane in particular is, 
is halfway addicted to it. Seems like he's playing it a lot, so he has a lot to teach you as well. I'm sure if you head over to his channel uh, on Twitch, you might see some more stuff, including my channel on Twitch too. You'll see us playing this occasionally. So uh, come hang out. I'll give you more details about when you can download and play this game yourself very soon. It's still in the top secret phase. Doesn't even have an official name just yet. But uh, if you stick around on this channel, I'll tell you more. So that said, ask your questions below. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, game on.